we use a very large amount of data in education for all sorts of purposes, particularly in our contemporary world where digital data is everywhere. It's really important though to differentiate learning analytics from that much broader field. So learning analytics has two key purposes. The first of these is to constantly improve the quality of learning for our students, uh, to improve the way that they can understand their resources, to improve the outcomes for them. The second way is to improve the environment in which they learn, uh, the sort of facilities that they have, understanding how they need to use them. And those two aspects taken together constitute this new field of learning analytics. We've always been interested in understanding how learning works. Uh, for over a hundred years, there's been close research on how we as humans actually learn. I mean, it's what makes us human. What's different now is that we have far more information and we can work in a different timescale. So let me explain a little bit more what that means. Traditionally, when we try and use theory to understand how to improve learning, we have to work on very long time cycles. So a course runs, we get student results at the end of the course. After the end of the semester, we analyze what we know. We decide on improvements that we want to make, but by that stage, of course, the next year of students are already studying. So we can only make those improvements the year afterwards. So sometimes an improvement cycle uh, for learning and teaching can take one or two years to affect changes. That's very slow. And of course, several generations of students move through uh, in that period. So the first thing that we get out of learning analytics is the possibility of changing on a far more ra rapid cycle. Because we're collecting data increasingly in real time, um, using pretty sophisticated techniques, we know what's happening almost as it is happening, which means that we can improve uh, on a very short term cycle, uh, probably at the next presentation of a course which is obviously better for our students um, because we're not waiting to make improvements. And in a world where the nature of knowledge is changing so rapidly, that's important. But the other thing that we can do is to begin to think about experiments. And one of the problems with uh, traditional ways of doing research and education is it's first of all very difficult to experiment and it's often quite unethical to do so. so the big challenge for learning is to set up quasi-experimental situations that help us to understand cause and effect better. And the reason we can do that more with learning analytics uh, is because we can collect so much information about courses that we can compare very minor changes that are made from one presentation to another and we can learn from that by changing very small variables to see what happens. That gives us an opportunity to understand much better how curriculum, for example, has outcomes, how very particular forms of assessment work, what forms of assessment don't work, to make those sorts of minor changes based on these quasi-experimental situations. One thing that we always need to remember in learning analytics is that we're dealing with people and the way people behave. We're not collecting data about traffic or about geological conditions or irrigation systems. We're actually working with humans. That leads us always into a range of practical and ethical concerns that need to be taken into account uh, to do this properly. Not only because they're legal requirements that we do that, but also because it's appropriate. We're dealing with a human experience, often one which is a very intimate one for the people that we're working with. So we always need to bear that in mind uh, in the work that we do.